Hello and welcome to the video. This is going to be all about some postpartum must-haves or things that can help you as a new mum to have a more comfortable postpartum experience or introduction to motherhood. So these aren't newborn essentials. I do have a separate video that I made on that back when Jed was born. I might have to redo it because some of it might not be relevant. But yes, as I said, these are just things to make your life more comfortable because as a new mum things aren't exactly comfortable at the beginning so any tips and tricks that we can get to make things a bit easier you got to grab onto those um i'm just here with jace he's chilling down here he is seven and a half weeks old um i have a two and a half year old who's out on a walk with uh my husband Lindsay at the moment so I'm just going to try and do this quick while they're gone and I've got my list right here so let's start I've got 13 things to go to in no particular order let's go okay disclaimer um, depending on how your delivery went it's going to depend what type of things you need for your postpartum recovery. So obviously if you've had a cesarean, you're gonna need a different set of things that I don't know about. I had, um, I didn't have a cesarean, so I can't comment on that. You might have to look up some different information. But um, for me, something that you will need a stock of at home is, uh, oh, by the way, this is about postpartum stuff. So we're talking like bodily fluids, breast milk and you know blood and stuff so if you don't want to learn about that then probably don't watch this video so you will need a stash of pads and liners so i found like initially at the hospital first few days you probably have those really long surfboard like ones but then at home these regular type ones are good for the first few weeks even possibly beyond like if you have a bit of light bladder leakage then you might need something like that and then you might be able to switch to like a thin liner i like the carefree liners the ones that come in a box they're a bit thicker than like just a thin thing but not as thick as those so you will need a stash of those and it's just with all these things some of them it's good you know you'll need them have them ready to go before you bring the baby home because with all these things, it's often just easier to have them so you don't have to scramble around, you know, tr trying to get to the shops when you're breastfeeding or whatever around the clock um, or trying to send your partner off to the shops and things. So we'll just continue. Another thing that you may or may not need, but good to know about anyway, is breast shields. So what a breast shield or nipple shield is, is a funny little plastic contraption that obviously goes across the nipple and it looks so weird um, it looks like this it's so weird so these come in three different sizes and so these these ones are made by Medala I also used some by another brand but this one I found better you have to go onto their website or not their website or you have to look on the packaging and you have to measure your nipple area to determine what size you need now what these are for if you have very sore nipples or cracked nipples they can just go over the top so baby latches onto that fake nipple to feed so that you're not in agony with your feeding um, they can also be helpful if your baby is having an issue latching then they can latch onto this instead like if you have flat nipples or something um, and then gradually over a few weeks you can transition to not having them so within the first few weeks sorry, I've got an itchy nose with breastfeeding you're you've got like this little urchin sucking the life out of you your boobs can be very very sore dry cracked and it can be really really painful to um have them feeding to the point where like you dread them feeding so i think personally having something like this on hand is a good idea but they do cost about 25 ish dollars so maybe just know about it um so that you can send someone to the shops if you do need them 
So I'm going to talk more about some breast care while we're talking about this. So on the subject of cracked sore nipples, uh, lanolin is very helpful. Um, this brand is Pharmacy Select, which I liked. Some types of lanolin are thicker and goopier. This one sort of, I think, had some kind of moisturizer mixed with it and was easier to apply. But after you've fed, you can put this on and it just helps to sort of soothe and heal the nipple area. Um, there's so many different kinds of brands. So Mugu is another one that I used and liked, which is safe for the baby to ingest if they do, which is obviously worth considering. Another thing that can be a lifesaver for um, at the beginning when you have those really sore boobs is these. They're called Hydrogel Breast Discs. And what it is, it's just a little... Um, it comes in a packet like this and it's like a cooling clear um, circle and you just put it inside your bra and it just um, it sort of provides moist, uh, moisture and healing and soothing at the same time. Um, I bought two boxes of these at the beginning and they're a 12 pack. I only ended up using um, 11 in total so that goes to show you that you it's not going to go on forever. You don't need to like stock up on 10 boxes or anything like that. Uh, another good thing to have is nursing pads. And I've got two types to show you. So these are disposable ones. These are from Coles. You can get them from lots of different places. What it is, is just, it's, it's kind of like an, a different kind of pad, but it's shaped for your boob and it's got some ad, ad, um, adhesive on one side. So you stick it into your bra. And what that is for is for leaky boobs, which can be a particular problem at the beginning. Also, before you have your baby, you might start leaking. But even now, um, like I do leak if Jace goes for longer periods without feeding or during the night, if you're like leaning on one side, it can cause a boob to leak. So rather than waking up in the middle of the night with leaks, you can have one of these on and be more comfortable and your clothes aren't all wet and stinky. Um, another option for breast pads is dispo uh, sorry, um, reusable ones and I have a bag of them. I have some from Peapods but you can also buy cheaper ones through eBay I think. And they just look like this. So very simple cotton um, uh, pad and you just, same thing, you put it into your bra. Um, these are probably good for night time and the other ones may be good for if you're going out of the, out and you want that guarantee that there's not going to be any leaks because it does have the one side of it is plastic, I suppose. So there's nothing that's going to show through that. Um, so that probably covers like the breast care. I want to mention now another thing you're going to need is maternity bras. So those are the ones that clip here or pull over on the side to allow you to feed without taking your bra off um please if you know of a comfy maternity bra and you're a mum please comment below because i'm still struggling to find them i think it probably depends on the size you are already but mine are fairly big i suppose what i'm finding is that i need something that where that has like fuller coverage so nothing that goes down into like a v they do make maternity bras like that i need like a bigger coverage area because otherwise they just pop out because your boobs go big and small through the day depending on how full they are with milk so you need something very very supportive um maybe like a crop top style one is more comfy but i would suggest don't go out and buy like 10 of one type of bra before you've even had your baby because you might find that that is so uncomfortable. Um, maybe test a couple at a time and then if you find that one is really comfortable, stick to that. But yeah, I've wasted a bit of money on ones that like bonds, they're not comfortable for me because they dip too low, they don't cover enough. So 
but then other people might find them great. So yeah, just try before you buy a lot. So the other thing you're obviously going to need is if you're, if you're choosing to breastfeed, you'll need nursing clothes. So clothes that are easily accessible for baby to feed without you having to completely undress yourself. Um, I, again, if you have any hints for me on clothes and places or particular items, feel free to list them below because I've been pretty unprepared this time. A big part of that is because um, well, there's a few things. I didn't know what the weather was gonna be like here in our new hometown. Coronavirus meant that shops were shut and oh, very badly stocked. So I'm kind of unprepared and still struggling to find things, but I will give you a few hints and tips. In general, you don't have to buy nursing specific clothes. You can just have, maybe have a pair like of comfy maternity jeans because you probably won't be bounced back to your pre-baby size straight away. And then you can just have some, some of those nursing singlets that unclip. And if it's colder, you can have some button down blouses that you can just open. Um, a nursing hoodie that zips open is a good one for winter. Um, in terms of night clothes, um, anything buttoned down, so buttoned down flannel at PJs, really comfy. Same thing, buttoned down summer PJs or a nightie that you can just sort of pull down easily. The slinky ones from Peter Alexander and bras and things are really good for that. Yeah, so anything easily accessible. Uh, if you're out and about shopping before you have your baby, Darling, you're being very chilled there, aren't you? Um, and you see button-down dresses, then yeah, buy them because they're really handy to have. Um, yeah, so nursing clothes. What else? What else? Okay, dressing gown is also really good for nighttime, particularly in winter um, when you're getting up a few times in the night. It's just cozy, it's just something to have around your shoulders and easy access and that type of thing. What else do we need at night time? So you're gonna want a, um, snacks. You get hungry through the night when you are waking up feeding. So um, no particular suggestions for snacks, but I have, I like Odie slices as like sort of a kind of carby satisfying thing in the middle of the night. Um, but you know, you could snack on a few nuts. You could have like some cheese, like protein or something like that. Um, a little hint for you, you can either, like, after you've had your snack, you can either quickly brush your teeth, but I prefer to just keep some mouthwash available because then when you wake up for your next feed, if you've had a snack in the middle of the night, you feel so yucky. It just tastes gross when you wake up. So I just have a snack and then I have a swish of mouthwash. Just makes me feel a bit better. Um, 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 what else do we need? Okay, um... In terms of feeding, oh, I don't have one here, but I can show you because Jace is lying on one. So I use a million of these, um, just towel, terry toweling squares that you can buy in 20 packs from like Target or Big W. We use those all over our house. So Jace is on the play gym now, but if he has a spew, the towel is going to capture the spew, not the gym. I use those for feeding, like I tuck it under his neck and under my um, bra so that it catches the breast milk that spills out. That way it's not falling onto my nursing pillow or going on my clothes or going on his clothes. We also keep a couple lined up on the end of our bed so that when I'm changing him, getting him in the middle of the night, um, or like getting him back in his swaddle in case he is sick it lands on a towel and not the doona so those things are just really handy to have for your own comfort because there's nothing it's gross having like milk running down your body because it does it does leak so that is my tip right there but you could also use like bibs or birth, birth cloths but that's a really cheap option um Okay, I've got two more things I think. One of my big uh, 
what am I saying? Postpartum essential must-haves is a mother's group. Now, I really feel for first-time mums who don't have access to mother's groups at the moment because of coronavirus, because my mother's group was a lifeline when I had Jed. It's a place to meet, to learn new things, to get friends, um, to just feel so much better knowing you're not going through challenges alone um it was amazing and i really really feel so much for mums who don't have that but you can the great thing is that you can have online support groups as well as well as having my um face-to-face -face mother's group from my first son who I'm still in contact with almost every day we have our little Facebook chat and they live in Sydney where I moved from so we're still really tight and I love them to death and we still talk about our you know now we're up to toddler challenges so so worthwhile but I also have a fa uh, online mother's group of mums I've never met we I connected to them when I was pregnant. We had a group called, we have a group called um, Aussie Mums with Babies Due in February 2018. So we've been chatting for nearly about three and a half years now since early pregnancy. And they are a continuous source of knowledge and friendship and just venting about all of life's little struggles, um, both with babies and otherwise. So totally essential to just have other yes have your regular friends to connect with but having other mums who are going through the same things as you to connect with is is so essential um i think i've touched on this before in my videos but back in the day um it was normal for people to live more in like tribal or community settings these days it's very much like often just one mum going it alone day after day without a tribe around her so it's really really important to find a tribe to help you and it will just it will help you so much um that is probably like my most important essential and so the last thing i'm going to say is to do with meal prepping so this is a, a little um left field but it will just help make your life easier before both of my sons came along, I did a lot of meal prepping of things that could be frozen. Get these little containers, um, foil containers, that will hold either one adult meal or two um, like servings of a saucy type thing that you then just cook a pasta or rice to go with. So there's all sorts of meals you can cook and freeze. Um, and it just takes the pressure off when you have your new baby at home, uh, takes the pressure off meal prep. So at the moment, what I do for meals, I still plan out what we're gonna eat through the week and when I do my shop, but I do a mixture. So for the weekend nights, I tend to put something fresh, like fresh food item on the menu. And then during the week, we will have two or three of these uh, frozen things that I've made. And then we'll have a couple of meals that are like um, easy, um, like sort of pre-made. So we'll buy uh, one of the pre-made quiches, family size quiches from Coles. Uh, we like those or we might have like a, a meat pie night or something easy like that. And then for the easy meal nights, we'll have something like um, burritos or like a, an easy pasta or like a ravioli or um what else <laughs> i'm struggling to think off the top of my head but just like easy prep meals that don't require recipes or anything like that um but yeah a bit of pre prep is it just it, it just takes the pressure off because nighttime is rush hour particularly with two with um feeding often cluster feeding bathing getting to bed unsettled witching hour like you don't want to be dealing with a lot of meal prep and washing up at the same time but i'm getting carried away talking about this that is the end of my list um like clock watching 
I hope that you got something useful out of this video but yeah thank you so much for watching and um, if you're not subscribed please hit subscribe I do lots of motherhood and lifestyle videos more so when I'm not in the throes of newbornness but um, we'll get back to that sort of stuff hopefully yeah soon ish maybe not soon but at some stage okay thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon we'll just do another shot of Jace before we go Hi Jace. Hi Jace. Look at you, Baba. Hi. So Jace, as I said, seven and a half weeks old. And when we had his six-week check, he um, he went very well. He is actually in the 97th percentile for length, so he's a he's a tall boy. And yes, you are 87th for weight. So big boy, just like your brother. Um, going really well, feeding well, sleeping really well, just in general, nice and chilled out and helping mama. So, gorgeous boy. Can you say bye? <laughs> no, I can't. Anyway.